Hey guys, this is Mr. Plume. Today I'll be taking a look at the individual meal pack food ration that I was sent by Aljuin Hearth. I actually won this in a giveaway on the MRE Exchange on Facebook, so I'd like to say thank you very much to Aljuin for sending it out to me. Now this is the fourth one I've seen so far. This is menu number three. I do know that Kiwi Dude also had menu number three, but I've already opened this up and I can tell there's a few differences between that. G. Schultz got menu number two and Gundog got menu number one, so I'm pretty fortunate to have gotten one of these alongside the holy trinity of MRE reviewers. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we get on the inside. So opening this up, you can see we do get a little paper that says what's included, but we'll set this aside and we'll do it one by one. So the first thing we have is some instant oatmeal, and this is real ginger and onion chives. Also have some hot and spicy cracker nuts. We've got a peanut butter Nutri bar. We also have some Magic Flakes premium crackers. Butter coconut biscuits. So these actually sound very good. I know I've seen a few reviews from Gundog and I believe G. Schultz and I'm, I'm sure they tasted good but just the way they looked on their videos looked incredible so I'm really eager to try those out. And I'm also eager to try these things out. These Belgian waffles. Just didn't seem like something you'd include in a Filipino style ration, but I am very intrigued to find out how they taste. And then here we have the Ula Lam, which I'm very excited to try out as well. It's just something completely different. And from what I can tell on the other reviews, this is kind of like a shredded beef in a thick, spicy sauce, like a, like a really um, potent type of sauce. So we'll take a look at that. Also got your instant powdered chocolate drink. Two of these powder calamansi Philippine lemon, so it's like an energy sports drink. Also a Barocco three-in-one coffee mix, so this already includes sugar, whitener, and the coffee itself. Also have some peanut butter, so I'm definitely gonna try this out on those butter coconut crackers, and I'm sure it's gonna be amazing a dark chocolate bar, and lastly the pork adobo rice, which I believe all of these menus had this included in it. So I think the only thing I need to cook are the oatmeal, the pork adobo rice, and the ulam. So we'll get ahead and start cooking those up right now. So I have some water boiling now, and while that does its thing, let's open up all these different containers and packages and see exactly how this stuff looks. So we'll start off with the peanut butter Nutri bar. And I did calculate the caloric content of this whole food ration, and it's around 1,800 calories. Um, there, are, there were a few things that I couldn't get the uh, calorie count on, so most of it did have calorie counts. So you can see on here, it's quite sticky actually, and like I said, this is peanut butter, so it looks like some some rolled oats, and then it has a peanut butter coating on it, so looks very good. Let's set that right here. We've also got these Magic Flakes, which are premium crackers. I wonder if these are salted or not. Let's uh, take a look. They do have some salt on the ingredients, so they, they're probably salted crackers. And let's open these up. You can see they did make the trip pretty well. And I know that the other reviewers actually had some problems with their boxes being opened up in two, and, and they had some stuff removed, so it's pretty unfortunate. I was fortunate enough to have mine come in good condition, so let's try not to make a huge mess with this. Here's that Belgian waffle I was talking about, and this is just, uh, just seems like it has sugar on it. And let's crack on open into this one as well. So there's actually two of these. They're a little firm, but sort of spongy in texture. And let's see how they smell. Oh, they smell very good. They smell like um, caramelized sugar, sort of. So I'm really eager to try those out now. Here are those butter coconut biscuits, which will go great with the peanut butter. And I'll probably get a sugar overload with all that. But take a few of these out of here and seems like these didn't fare as well they're a bit cracked so let's take these out 
and we'll grab one of them. You can see it does have some shiny sugar flakes on it, and they're pretty buttery on it. So, like it's such a butter coconut biscuit, pretty standard stuff, and they smell very good as well. And then we've also got these Nagaraya hot and spicy cracker nuts. So, let's open those up, and we'll put those right in here. So these seem just like shelled nuts that are covered in a crispy exterior and obviously they're probably hot and spicy. Got the Goya dark chocolate bar. Not the biggest fan of dark chocolate, but I won't complain. Let's see what we got. Looks to be in pretty decent shape, just a little bit of oxidization on there, so nothing major. And then finally, the peanut butter. So, pretty sure I gotta net this a bit. And this is creamy style peanut butter. So let's crack open into it if I can. If I can do this, and I'm actually gonna put some on the waffle first, and I'll do some on the butter coconut biscuit. So it is a little bit runny, but not as bad as I've seen on some American MREs so we'll just set this aside and here you can take a look at the peanut butter so it's a bit oily like I mentioned but I'm sure it tastes just fine and let me go get a few cups and we'll start making our coffee hot chocolate and our energy drinks so I can already tell this ration is gonna make a ton of food and in the future I may need to buy a bigger tray but let's go ahead and make these drinks out I do want to mention, this is not the first time I've tried Filipino food. I actually live in, in Vegas, and there's a huge Filipino population here. So there's plenty of Filipino restaurants out there, but a lot of this stuff is new to me. So I'm, like I said, eager to try it out. And we'll start off by making this chocolate drink. And I'm making this cold. I know it's supposed to be a uh, hot chocolate mix, but I do prefer just room temperature. So let's go ahead and mix that in. So I sped that up a bit just to save you some time while I mixed it up. And next we'll do the three-in-one coffee. And this packet is actually just chalk-packed of this three-in-one mix. So I'm not going to put the whole thing in. But let's see if I can do this without making a big mess. Huh. It's a bit tricky. There we go. So you can see it looks... A bit lighter than coffee, obviously, because it has the whitener in it, the sugar in it, so I think uh, that should be enough. And let's see how this is. I know that that may pose a problem to some people who like their coffee black. Some people may like extra sugar, no whitener, but obviously this is just a ration that Al Juin put together, so you really can't blame him. I'm sure this is probably the way that they might do it in the Philippines. And as you can see, it already has a much lighter color, looks sort of like a, a beige, caramelish color. It's not complete coffee, so it actually smells very good as well. And I am not a coffee drinker, but for the sake of the review, I've got to try these things. And last but not least, we have this Philippine lemon powder. So this is probably the one I'm looking forward to most. Let's see if we can crack open into this. Now, seeing as this is my first MRE slash ration review, I'd like you guys to comment down in the description, see what kind of changes I can make, how I can improve. I am planning on making more of these videos, so in the meantime, I'm, I think I'm probably going to get some first strike rations, maybe meal cold weather. It's just a, a few different things to try out, so it seems like this one has crystallized a bit. It's not a lot of powder in there. Hopefully, it will be strong enough to make the whole drink. So we'll find out soon enough, won't we? So now that our drinks are made, let's move on to the all good instant oatmeal. This is real ginger and onion chives flavor. And then it's asking for 175 milliliters of boiling water. I added a little bit less just because I like my oatmeal to be a bit on the thicker side. So I'm actually eager to see how this tastes because I've never had a savory oatmeal. I know the other guys had some corn ones, but corn can be sweet, whereas 
ginger and onion chives are pretty much a savory thing. So let's add this in. You can see already there's a bit of green pieces, which are probably the chives, and there are some small, I'm not sure if you can see right here, there's some small ginger pieces as well. So we'll mix this in and we'll give it a few minutes to clump back together and turn into a thicker oatmeal. So we finally got our oatmeal thickening up. We've got our three drinks. We've got all our ready to eat food all set. So it's now time to take care of the main meals, which is the oolalam and the pork adobo rice. So they're a little bit hot. Let's tear these open. And we'll set these right down here. So this is very reminiscent of MRE fried rice. So I'll zoom in a bit. You can see, let's move this down as well. It's pretty similar to it because it has a coagulated consistency. So it's turned a little bit into a mush. See if we shake it around a bit, you can see the granules are all stuck together. So while it does smell incredible, the texture is just a little bit too mushy. But no big deal, I've eaten rice like this before and I'll, I'm sure this one will be good as well. And then finally we got the Oolalam ready to eat Oolam flakes. So let me just shift the camera back to its position and tear into this. So I wasn't sure what this was at first, but fortunately those uh, videos came out from the other guys. So you can see it's a bit of an oily consistency and it has some shredded beef on there. And the smell reminds me of Korean barbecue. So kind of like a, a spicy barbecue-y, well condimented meal sort of thing. So it's hard to explain, but I'm sure once I taste it, I'll, I'll get a better idea of that. So let's start off with these uh, Belgian waffles. And we'll try out the normal ones first. So these are very good. They're a little bit spongy. The outside is soft, like a waffle would be, although some waffles are crispy. It's slightly sweet, not overpoweringly sweet, so this peanut butter will actually probably improve it. And let's try it out with the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the peanut butter is super creamy. It's not super sweet either, which is very good and it complements it well. So you have slight sweetness on both sides, so you get a good sweetness. You get the creaminess of the peanut butter that goes well with the sponginess. It kind of soaks into the waffle. So those are terrific. Thanks, Aljuin. Let's try out these uh, salty crackers. Very crispy, not stale at all. And I was surprised by that just because You'd expect these to go a little bit stale. I got this package about two months ago, and obviously they're not vacuum sealed or anything, so these came out really good. Let's give this peanut butter bar try and actually kind of stuck to the tray. There you can see it, pretty shiny. Some oats, some peanut butter, so I'm getting a peanut butter overload today. Hmm. It's kind of stiff. The peanut butter really became kind of solid. It's chewy. These um, small oats or, or whatever they are, are not crunchy at all. So it's really just kind of like um, a firm texture. It's mostly the peanut butter that you get and it's actually not very sweet at all. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That peanut butter right there is much sweeter than this peanut butter here. So. Let's give these butter coconut cookies a try. Love the way they look. They feel obviously buttery coated, kind of smooth. And then a little bit shiny. So let's try these out. Very good as well. They're obviously more fragile than normal cookie. I would say that's because it probably has more butter in it. So they break apart more easily. They're still crunchy. 
And again, it's just slightly sweet. It's sweet enough to where it's nice to eat it, but it's not like American type of desserts that are overly sweet. So comparing this to an Oreo, an Oreo would be a million times sweeter if you, if you get what I'm saying. And let's try this out with a peanut butter on top. And again, I'm guessing it's gonna be just incredible. Mm-hmm. Very good as well. That's actually it's actually pretty sweet. So it's not it's not like the um the Belgian waffle that was just slightly sweet. But so far I have to say the Belgian waffle with the peanut butter is my favorite thing. And let's try out these drinks now. So we've got the three in one coffee. I probably should have added a bit more of that. It's it's a little bit on the light side. You can see it looks like normal coffee would once you add creamer and whitener to it, but it's not super strong, so it's an okay flavor. Like I said, I don't drink a lot of coffee, and I, I would drink that, but obviously that's due to the fact that I didn't put as much as I should have. Here we've got that lemon powder drink. You can see the color looks just like lemonade, just like it should. And that one's really good as well. That one has more sweetness than, than a citric feel. So it's, it's less acidic than I'd expect my lemonade to be, but it's still really good. And then finally, the chocolate milk that we made, or sorry, the hot chocolate instant drink mix that I made with room temperature water. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite out of the three so far. So that one is just typical, you know, instant chocolate. It tastes fine, it's sweet, and it came out really well. So, on the note of chocolate, we'll also try out this dark chocolate. So, that one's probably sort of sweet and chocolate, milk chocolates type, and here's a dark one. So, like I said, it came out pretty well. You can see it's not heavily oxidized at all. Hmm. And that's very good as well. Like I said, I don't mind dark chocolate. I don't think it's the best chocolate out there. Obviously, I have a sweet tooth, but this is really good. And now that I'm done with all the uh, sweet stuff, we'll try out the hot and spicy cracker nuts. These are actually super crunchy and crispy because you get the, the nut on the inside plus the outer layer, and you have a lingering heat on the back, so right now I can slowly feel it building up and building up. It's it's not overly powerful. It's not something that's gonna make you you know cry because it's so hot, but it's it's a nice snack. I can definitely recommend these, and I I'd probably eat these if I was having a beer or having a drink at a bar somewhere. These would make a really good snack. They're just kind of like beer nuts, covered in this um, light crunchy exterior, and then also lightly seasoned with spice, so those are very good. So here we've got the ginger and chive oatmeal. You can see it has not thickened up as much as I'd like, and that's even though I added a bit less water to this, but still not bad, it's not as runny as I've seen some other people make these. So you can see on here you've got the chives, which are those green little leaves, and if I can fish one out you can see there's a piece of ginger floating right there. So let's give this a shot and see how it is. Hmm, it's, it definitely smells like a, a chicken noodle soup, so I'm not sure if the broth on here or whatever they use is made of from chicken, but it's, it's very light. Obviously the oatmeal should be thicker, but the way I, I, I feel it is it's kind of like a noodle in this case. And then you don't want really to taste the ginger, it's more of the, the oniony chive flavor. But it's actually really good. I, I probably want to eat this on a daily basis, but this is the kind of soup that you want when you're sick. Something light, something more hearty than uh, just a broth. So yeah, this is pretty good, yeah. And then finally we've got the pork adobo rice and the ulam, which judging from the back of the container, it says it has um, pork and some vegetables in it. So actually it's not vegetables, it's plant protein, my mistake. 
and you can see it does look a bit oily and that's from the vegetable oils that are made it's kind of like a I wouldn't say a curry sauce but it, it's definitely a, a well condimented sauce so let's give this right here a try and a smell as well it smells very heavily seasoned with pepper so I'm not quite sure what adobo is um, I've had it before but I'm not quite sure what goes into it but it smells like it's heavily seasoned with pepper and then you can see it has some chunks of pork in there, a little bit of rice and that's about it so let's give this one a try hmm, that's, that's, that's good as well um, the rice obviously is a bit soggy like I mentioned it's, it's not firm you can see the granules are kind of stuck together but the taste is all there you get little chunks of pork, you get saltiness the rice does well to to make sure that it's not overpowering with salt and that pepperiness adds a little bit of uh, like an umami flavor so it's, it's quite good let's give this another bite mm -hmm. the, um, the contrast and texture between the soft rice and the pork chunks is nice as well so really like that let's give this oolam a try on its own We'll get you a picture as well, right here, a little bit of a close-up. So, it looks like shredded beef, and then on my hand you can see it's kind of like an oily, dark brown sauce. Maybe like a steak sauce, but we'll see. Okay, it's definitely oily. It, it covers the inside of your mouth and your tongue, and it kind of stays there for a bit. The shredded beef is super soft, so if you've ever had like a uh, Mexican taco made with shredded beef, it just kind of like disappears in your mouth. That's the, uh, the texture we're talking about. So it's really non-existent, but it, it tastes incredible. And I'm gonna go, ahead, gonna go ahead and try this together. So double pork, rice, some vegetable oils. Let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. That's really damn good. Um, again, it's just kind of like uh, taking it to the next level. So you have a third contrasting texture, which is a soft pork on there, and then it's just a different um, different flavor. The oil kind of coats the rice. So all in all, it's very good. I'd have to say for being my first international review, although this is not an official review, I'm super pleased with it, and I'd like to thank Aljuin for all his help in getting this to me, obviously for picking me as a giveaway winner and I promised I'd make this video for him so it kind of slowly developed into where I said you know I'm gonna give it a shot might start doing some YouTube videos so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know what I could do better obviously it's my first video I've got a lot of different things to learn different things to do camera angles what stuff to show what stuff not to show so I'd appreciate if you guys would let me know and in the future like I said I'll probably have some first strike rations meal cold weathers and just standard MRE stuff. So thank you very much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good night.